ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wrestling fans all around the world, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry I'm late. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, I, I can see that it's a new year, but nothing has changed. And uh, I love you the way you are, Dan. Not really. So, we are back here today with another episode First episode of 2021, first and foremost, on a serious note, we hope that this episode finds everyone safe. There's a lot of things going on in the world right now, and we are just doing our best to reach out to all the fans of the podcast and of wrestling and provide you with the best content that we possibly can. Before we get started on the task at hand today, gentlemen, how we doing? Okay, so a guy who showed up late and a guy who's coughing. We're doing good so far. Ahem. Sounds, sounds like you got a bit of a cough there, Kamish. What's going on? Wait, wait a second. Are you having another case of suffering succotash? God, no. That, that, that's up to an animated cat and the head of the table. But, uh, it is I, your fearless, humble advocate of basically anything and everything, uh, except on weekends. Yeah. Oh, wait. This is the weekend. Never mind. I'm available 24-7. Anywho, uh, I'm doing great. How have you guys been? Uh, that depends on the day. Um, I've been doing what I can. Yeah, I more or less agree. So a couple of good days here, a couple of bad days there, but just trying to make it through the hard times that we're living in right now. <laughs> we have two things on the agenda today. First of all, we want to address a few comments that were made about the current product of the WWE. Long-time tenured legend The Undertaker recently was on the Joe Rogan podcast and had a few comments to say on what he felt, his honest opinion about the current product of the WWE. And so, Dan, if you want to segue into that for us whenever you're ready. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's roll the tape. I just think the product is a little soft. There's obviously guys here and there that have an edge to them, but there's too much pretty, not enough substance, I think, right now. So that's what he said. Um, you heard it right there from, uh, you know, our, our expert recreation. But uh, <laughs> anyway, what, so, so that's what The Undertaker said. And I'll, I'll go into this real quick, too, because the article I'm looking at also references Drew McIntyre's response. Okay. Uh, so you've got your current WWE champion responding by saying, the in-ring talent right now, we've got the best in-ring talent roster of all time. If you look at our talents from top to bottom, what they can do in the ring, what they can pull off from a storytelling perspective in the ring, in a physical perspective especially, there's nobody better. You look at you look at the Attitude Era, you compare the matches, turn the volume off and watch the match quality, and compare it to now, there's no comparison. So... Do you guys each want to chime in with your initial reaction to the Undertaker's portion, and then then we can talk on a more broad aspect here? Okay, so uh, I kind of introduced this in, in our little group chat that we have yesterday. Being all for what the Undertaker said, just because, you, of course, I'm, I'm an old-school guy who appreciates what is, what is of the past. I'm going to be wrong. I still like the product of the present, even though he is right on the matter that it is a little, quote-unquote, soft. But it's not to say that it's not a good product. So, well, that, that's a lot to say. But well, I, with, with Taking certain aspects into account, which I'll go further into here in a minute, but go ahead. I, I think he's right in the sense that there are certain things that lack currently from what I guess fans of the old are used to but fans of the of the current and the new would seem to kind of disagree in that sense because it's not 
the product, let's be real, it's not what it used to be. It, it's not going to be the same thing. If something is to last, it is to evolve always. Right. So, in regards to that, is it different? Yes. Is it soft? Based on the, the generations that he comes from, it can be seen that way, but when you're given something to do, you, you, you do what you can with it. You know? I, I, I want to respond to that real quick. So ahead, as, far as, as far as soft goes, what I would say is that it's basically the difference between a, a, a hard light and a soft light. Yeah, it, does the does the soft light fill in a face for a portrait a lot nicer? Does it make it look prettier? Yeah, did they both fill the room though? Mm, that not really. No. Oh. Well, I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong on that assessment because. Okay. If I can ask you guys, you guys can point pinpoint exactly when you became fans of the WWE, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what year, respectfully, was that for each of you? 2004. 2000? Okay, so judging by those two years specifically, one of you entered right into the Ruthless Aggression era, right in its, like, core year, and the other in the... I would say, what, the third year of the Attitude Era? In that ballpark, yeah. Yeah. So you guys have seen what the product has become from those eras. Imagine coming into the product around the very, very end of the Golden Era towards the new generation. Like the, I would say, 96. Right. I've I've seen what this product has become from then to now. Can I say it's changed drastically? Yes. Has it gone soft? Not necessarily. But it's different. It's not going to be what it, what it was back then. And and when you have a guy who has been through plenty of errors and plenty of change, is his comments verbatim from his perspective yes but from a fan's perspective it could be seen drastically different that's why I feel from what he said I personally feel like he's right but at the same time it, it's a bold statement to make based on what the product has become throughout these last 30 years in my opinion Sean, Sean do you want to jump in a little bit before I go off on a tangent Personally and very honestly, I think that one of the most like toxic things to do in life is to compare, to take two different eras and say, how do I compare 1995 to 2021? How do I compare 2001 to 2021? And the simple answer is you really can't. And I don't think it's fair to do so because we're talking about two different times Wrestling-wise, politically, and just with everything going on, I, I don't really think it's a fair assessment. With that said, yes, I do agree with Taker that the product is soft, but I don't think that you can blame the talent because the talent, I, I feel like back in the new generation era, in the Hulkamania era, in the Attitude era, in the Ruthless Aggression era... From what, like again, I haven't worked in the company, not not even for a minute, but I just feel like back then, superstars had a lot of leeway to go off script, to be spontaneous, to improv, and to do something in the moment. Now I feel like if someone dares to go off script, you quickly see it. There's an article that gets published the next day, WWE management are, uh, are mad with so-and-so because so-and-so went off script. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, saw this or heard about this, but Mustafa Ali made a comment at like the first Raw of this year when he said, yeah, talent like me doesn't get airtime because we're too busy hearing what you're going to do, brother, for the 1,000th time. And this was on Raw Talk, and immediately the next day, well, there it was, the article, oh, WWE management are iffy about giving Mustafa Ali a live mic again. 
And I think that that's one of the biggest problems is that while legends want to berate the talent, I don't think it's necessarily the talent. I just think it's, it goes back to that expression of trying to make chicken soup out of chicken shit, essentially. And I've heard people like John Cena say that as well, is that I wasn't always handed the best thing, the best storyline, but I had to make something out of it. I just feel like during those times, the superstars had more leeway. Now I just feel like everything is scripted where, okay, yeah, you're the talent, but here's what you say, here's what you do, nothing more, nothing less. And it doesn't allow for the talent to grow. And, you know, they they get stifled and watered down. I was going to say, it's kind of like chiding a, a dog for being lazy when you never let it off the chain. Exactly. Uh, because... Yeah, you, like you look at those earlier times, and what I'll say is there's a there's a couple of things that play into all this. First of all, uh, l- greater regulations. Back in the early 2000s and before that, you, you didn't have a, a, as many restrictions on what they could show or what like what they could show. Uh, any related to their health, um, the the practices that had been cultivated in this this culture yeah. of professional wrestling, and like you hear all these stories going back back then, how people were dicks to each other, and they would they would constantly uh, work stiff, right? And so people were getting hurt, people were clumsy. Uh, you watch some of the documentaries, and you you start to realize some of these guys were not good. Then you, you, you go past that, and like I said, um, I mentioned before we got on here, that I think if you hold the today versus like the Attitude Era, and you average out across all of your talent, um, who, or you, you average out talent and, and quality, the main thing that you have to utilize as the X Factor is the management. Yeah. Because... The, the wrestlers are not the ones writing the stories, they're the actors. And so they're told, go out and tell this story. Uh, go out and tell the story this way. And it's like, oh my god. Versus, like you said, the, the older the older stories where they were either edgy or they had more flexibility or the, the performers got to, got to play with it. The reason The Rock is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, if you go back and watch his promos, sure. Uh, like, Watching them in retrospect, a lot of them were very cookie cutter, but he was h- highly charismatic. He sold those promos, and he got to he got to improvise. He got to have fun with it. Uh, and then, as far as superstardom goes, you've got the era where you had people like Undertaker, uh, The Rock, Kurt Angle, Stone Cold, Jericho, Triple H, who were at the the top of your card, and all of those guys are great. All of their stories were great. But then you look at some of your undercarters, like, God bless them, the Hollies. And I don't care, man. Like, I, I can't think back to a, a genuine story where Steve Blackman or Al Snow or Dean Malenko were compelling to me from a storytelling perspective. Yeah. Were some, were some of them very technically sound? Sure. Like, there's a reason that Dean's been a trainer for a thousand years. Right. But then we progress through time. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. A thousand years or a thousand and four years? Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so you move forward and you've got people like Eddie, you've got Kurt, you've got uh, Benoit, you've got Jericho. <laughs> you start to gravitate more toward the technical aspect. And those people uh, are the matches you love to watch for that reason. Um, submission counters have always been one of my favorite things to watch. And now you get to today and you get to see really pretty transitions, really cool sequences. Uh, the the stuff where you've got Ro- Roman and Drew and them and they do the like last minute duck duck and weave and hit their finisher thing. Those are really cool sequences. Um, or you get Ricochet who does uh, the 450 centon or whatever the hell he does. 630. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of really, really cool things from a performance aspect, and they're a lot safer overall, give or take a few Nia Jaxes. But all in all, I, I would say that as soft as they are, quality-wise, they're definitely up there. 
That's a good in, in spite of the bad stories. <laughs> in spite of the bad stories. So essentially, what what it is is that you're you're saying it, it's it's based on your talent to create something out of nothing, right? To to make sure to give the quality, even regardless of what they're given. Um, I, Overall, I that that we, we I feel like all three of us can acknowledge that they've been hard pressed to make gold out of what they've been given over the last couple of years, especially. It, once we went to the Thunderdome era, like the stuff, w- like I would say right now, while everything's still shut down, Randy, the Fiend, and Alexa have been the most compelling thing in two, <laughs> in yes. two years. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I yeah. just, I just wanted to make one final comment about it, and that's one of the again, like to their detriment. One of the biggest things is when you tell the talent, when you look at talent like Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles, you know, people who, I'm exaggerating, but, you know, have been wrestling for a hundred years, and you basically tell them, yeah, we're going to write everything out for you, and you don't get a say in how anything happens. And I felt like in the Attitude Era, like, when you hear all these interviews, when wrestlers are, are asked about well, how did this come about, or how did you come up with this, or what was the genesis of that? A lot of times they tell you, oh, I just, I tried it out, and I pitched it, and they loved it, and we went with it. But I feel like now, that is non-existent, where the talent really doesn't get any of that, because everything is so heavily scripted, which is why I think, like, I'm, I'll maybe sound like a hypocrite, but like comparing NXT and the main roster... There's a reason why NXT works is because you you see it all the time and you feel it that the talent actually has a say in everything. It's not just Triple H keeping everybody under his thumb. So, again, it's like I get where Taker is coming from, but at the end of the day, I don't think that the talent could necessarily be blamed for everything. Yeah. All right, then, with all that said, as I said, it's a new year, and of course, if you're a WWE fan, in January, it is always time for the Royal Rumble. It's time to kickstart the road to WrestleMania. I think we have a lot of thoughts about this year's Royal Rumble, and so let's not waste any more time. Kamish, match breakdown guy, take it away. So, we're going to cover the first few matches, not the main two reasons why we're here. Yeah. We're going to start with the SmackDown Women's Championship match between one Sasha Banks, your current champion, versus the untouchable uh, Carmella, along with Reggie Reggie Reginald. Is he original? I don't think so. Very well. One of a few championship matches for the night. Your thoughts, gentlemen. Dan, do you want to start off? Uh, sure. Um, I I had been going through and watching snippets, uh, watching the clips on YouTube for a while to keep, kind of keep myself fresh on stuff, and I um, stopped following these three after I saw Sasha put Reggie in the bank statement for the fourth time. Um, God bless Sasha getting the push after showing up on the Mandalorian. But I have been uninspired by this, uh, this feud and I hope that this is the end of it. Who would you want to win? Sasha. Okay. I will say this. Going back to your point, Dan, once again, maybe there is the whole thing of, much like how Nia Jax was always putting Lana through the announce table for like 10 (laughs) weeks in a row, I think that they fall a victim to basically having the same thing happen, but kind of in a different form. I, I, too, hope that this is the end of this rivalry, and for reasons that I will explain later on when we discuss the Rumble, I hope that Sasha walks away with the win on this one. There's such a thing as the rule of three in, like, improv, and that's that you can you can hit on a joke three times, and that's it. Yeah. So, 
I feel like they a lot of times won't pace properly to really land those three deliveries. Right. And they'll burn them all real fast. Or like with the, the table spot, do it, do it, what, 11 times? How many times was it? I think it was 11. Um, yeah, it was it was overblown at that point. It was like, oh my God, again? Well, We're putting her through another table? And if... if there, there, you still didn't really get a payoff off of that, did you? Well, I will say this. If anything positive came out of it, it's that if you want to revisit any of those 11 uh, Samoan drops, um, <laughs> you can do so by going on the WWE Network and watching it for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. It's not ten dollars. It's not a thousand dollars. Not one million dollars. Up until March, just nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. I don't know how much the Peacock streaming service costs, yeah, yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that another episode. <laughs> but uh, I'll say this about this: here, I agree with both of you in, in the regards, of, like. It's like a dead horse. It's been beaten enough. It, I'm I, I, would, I, I, I would hate to see how many horse carcasses there are stuffed in the wings of the performance center. Ask for oh, Flair. I'm sure they're hidden somewhere. <laughs> At but, least there's uh, yeah, four. I, I'm all in on Sasha Banks winning this. No, like I'm not giving, not taking credit away from Carmella. I, I like her character development. I, I kind of find Reggie annoying. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on Sasha. Let's move on to the uh, the Universal Women Tag Team Championship match of your current defending champions, Asuka and Blancina. I mean, Charlotte Flair. Defending once again against uh, the Iconics. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> They're done. Uh, Shayna Baszler and... Who? Don't make me say it again. You didn't say it the first time. Nia Jax. Oh, uh. So, I guess I'll take this one. Kind of a... Like, everything is in such a weird <laughs> position. Because Oscar. <laughs> is your Raw Women's Champion, and now she's Tag Team Champions with the person that broke her streak, and Nia and Shayna, like, are just kind of there. I thought that if they properly built Nia Nia and Shayna to the point where, like, if they were taking on two contenders, two other contenders, like maybe, I don't know, uh, the Riot Squad... Maybe if they lost the tag team titles, then you could build up Sh- uh, Shayna versus Nia at Mania, which I think is a WrestleMania worthy match. But everything is so weird. Like, the only thing that I take away is I'm like, thank goodness that Blanc Cena has the tag team championships because that means she won't be in a title picture, hopefully, at Mania. But other than that, like, this match is just there for me. I really don't have an affection for it. I think that uh, Asuka and Cena will retain and yeah, that's it. I I agree. I, I don't think that Shayna and Nia have the longevity um, as a team to justify putting the belts back on them. I think it's time to consider that ship sailed. And you can have some like I I don't I also don't want this, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we see it. Is we see the stereotypical split up of your of your tag team champions right around WrestleMania, and you pit those two against each other again. Um, <laughs> but I would rather that the tag titles change hands on like a standard raw or something put them on, on one of the other the other teams like you've got riot squad put it on riot squad Liv, Liv and uh, Ruby have been doing fine um the the other reason is because 
I think you need to free up those tag championships going into WrestleMania. Yeah. So if you put those on somebody else like Liv and Ruby or uh, is it Lacey and Pe- not Lacey and Lacey and Peyton? Yeah, that's sure. like an on and off thing. Or do that. Throw it on those two. I don't care. Well, how about um, how about Lacey and Ric Flair? Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, put it on one of the other groups on a random show, and then you can have something. You can have Oscar be the the focus of your Royal Rumble winner, because the just to to tie into it, you've seen Alexa doing the possession thing. And I saw rumblings online that Alexa should win. And maybe we see her beat Oscar at Mania for the title in her possessed form. I don't know. I like but it. But I think that champion paranormal Oscar, not Oscar, sorry, uh, Alexa, might be interesting. Because now, now we've got the female fiend. Right. Uh, so it, it could be a fun plot and a fresh take on the same thing we did. Um, and then, of course, we need to see what the hell is going to go on with the Fiend himself. Um, and if we're what we're doing with Edge. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm just saying, just split Nia and Shayna up already. I've never liked this combination since its inception. I'm not invested in this match. Austin Charlotte win. Fair. I also, to your point, Sean, I wouldn't be terribly upset seeing Nia choked out in the uh, Cure Fuda. Well, I didn't say that verbatim, but very well. <laughs> Moving forward, we have the WWE Championship match with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Defending against the returning, because he has nothing to do. I'm hoping his two-year contract is up this year, Bill Goldberg. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to take the reins on this one. Go ahead. Why is he back? Why? Why is Goldberg in this match? Thank you. I... I get it. He had, what, a two, three-year deal for, like, worth a lot of money? He can claim when he wants to come back. I guess he's earned that. I just find it with bad timing, but I've been trying to cope with the fact that it's like, okay, maybe we're getting closure to some particular set of a story involving him. And by him, I mean Goldberg. Or maybe... It's it's a precedence to what can happen. I'm just invested in Drew beating Goldberg, being the one person to end the current streak of Goldberg coming back, winning a championship every single time he wants to come back. Yeah, I... Here's the thing, is that there comes to a point where it's like, okay, these legends coming back, and having a like nine non-title matches at a WrestleMania to an extent is fine, especially for a Goldberg because theoretically he has two minute squash matches, so he's not really taking up TV time essentially. Like if Goldberg came back and squashed Matt Riddle in two seconds, I'm okay with that. I'd love to see You're it. You're okay with that. Yeah. So is everybody else. Um, I'm sure everybody's very high on that idea, but. This in particular, I really don't see a point for it. Um, I love Goldberg, always have, always will. But I really hope that we don't squander everything that Drew has worked for just to give it to Goldberg, who essentially is a part part timer. Like if Drew beats him, that's that's kind of like another notch in Drew's belt. But I think this should be like a one and done deal. That, that's my situation with it. It's like, why are we bringing in Goldberg for Drew? Is it, I'm hoping it's not for the squash. I'm hoping it's the other way around. It's, it's for Drew to accomplish it. I don't want to see it. I just don't, like, don't get me wrong. 
I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Goldberg's. I'm not a fan of his right now with this situation. It's not meant for you. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is that I, I'm hopeful that this is going to be one of those passing of the torch moments, kind of like where we had we had Drew beat Brock. Now, if Br- Drew beats, geez, that was difficult to say. <laughs> now, if Drew beats Goldberg. Um, now, both of those titans, it, it puts him on a specific platform. It yeah. puts him on a certain level. Yeah. And uh, it's it's sort of that earn the respect of those that came before you type of thing. And I yeah. feel like that might be what the point is. Because then we put Drew, we send Drew off to Mania. The question is, who does Drew face? Because I know there was that brief chatter that maybe it would end up being him and Roman at Mania. But they're both champions right now. So, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, if it's for the betterment of pushing Drew's resume and giving him that prestige, because you you have to make the title reign memorable somehow. So, if that's what this is all for, like, yeah, Drew beat uh, Brock. Drew beats Goldberg. It's like, okay, yeah, I can, I can like, jump on that bandwagon, sure. But if we're going to pull a Goldberg versus Fiend type of thing where he gets the title when he really doesn't have to, it's not necessary, really. It, it's also strange to me that WWE, after burying so many WCW people over the years... He's the exception use Goldberg in such a manner that they do, where they're like, yeah, we love you, Bill. Have another title. So I, I don't know. So who's your guys' pick? Drew. Uh, Drew. Okay. The consensus is there. <laughs> is there anything else you guys want to touch upon? No, I'm good. Dan? I'm solid. Nope. Okay. Let us move to the Universal Championship match. Your current head of the table, Mr. Roman Reigns, will be defending his belt, not versus Adam Pearce, but his replacement, the one, Kevin Owens. I was actually surprised that they didn't take it all the way to the pay-per-view to have Adam Pearce in the match. The Because uh, the, 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 the thing that stood out to me, is that it was an interesting change of pace when I because I I didn't see it live when I saw the notice the little ad pop up that said oh Roman versus Adam I was like that's a peculiar choice but I'm not mad about it not that I expected Adam to have like a shot or a chance but, or a chance but I thought it was an interesting change of pace versus going just going with somebody. Like I'm, I'm sure. At, I, I didn't. I also don't remember if I saw him in his recent stuff in the ring. But if he can, if he could have gone for a match um, or sold another Roman beatdown, and then you have something like it gets close because Owens interferes or something. I don't know. I thought that would have been a more interesting take than what we have. But I'm sure that the match will be fine. These guys are both competent. It's not going to be a five-star classic, but I feel like you'll easily get a a three-and-a-half or four-star match out of these two. I think that this will be a good match. It won't be like like you guys have speculated. It's not going to be a five-star. That's for sure. But it'll be a good match. I mean, I kind of would have liked the whole perspective of, oh, giving somebody who hasn't had in-ring competition for almost a few years now, you're either going to sell it really hard that you're trying your best or or somehow one of you is going to put the other over, but not for the belt. But now that Kevin is stepping in, I kind of... It continues on with this rivalry. It gives it substance. I mean, they've been doing very well, I think, for these last few weeks as far as their promos, as far as, 
you know, what they're trying to accomplish with this rivalry. I still see Roman winning it. I, I don't know if you placed your pick, Dan. For for which one? For this match? Yeah. Um, Roman. Okay. Uh, so, Sean, uh, your feelings? So, and pick. I personally think that this rivalry has actually been pretty cool. Uh, the TLC match between these two was awesome. I think it was Kevin Owen, one of Kevin Owens' best performances. I think that the Adam Pearce route would have been interesting because it's building Roman's heel character. And by the same token, I think you could have done what you insinuated, Dan, was right towards the end of the match, you have Kevin Owens come out and cause commotion. Uh, but now that they're having a one-on-one match, I honestly hope that this rivalry gets extended until Mania because I wouldn't mind seeing one more match between these two and ultimately letting Kevin Owens have his moment because we always talk about, you, Dan, always talk about the season finale and kind of the new beginning. I wouldn't mind if Roman's reign comes to an end and Kevin Owens kind of gets his his time in, in the spotlight. But I think that Roman is walking away with the win on Sunday, but I hope that it's with the intention of extending this feud until Mania. So we have the women's fourth Royal Rumble match in history? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> These are the following contestants uh, based on roster. So far, the women's uh, division, no one has been announced from NXT. Only 13 out of 30 women have announced that they're in the Rumble. Uh, like I said, no one from NXT has announced, and no legends have announced. So we have the following from Monday Night Raw. Nia Jax. Blonde Cena, a.k.a. Charlotte Flair. Mandy Rose. Dana Brooke. Peyton Royce. Alexa Bliss, and Shayna Baszler. Now, from SmackDown, we have Bianca Belair, Bailey, a.k.a. Karen, Liv Morgan, Ruby Wright, Tamina, and just recently announced as of today, being Saturday, your 30th entrant for the Women's Royal Rumble will be SmackDown's Natalia. Uh, gentlemen, who, who wants to start with this? Go ahead, Sean. Okay. I <laughs> have, a, like... So, we always talk about who do you think is going to win and who do you want to win. Um, there were a few people that I thought, had they been perfectly aligned, like in space and time, could have won the Rumble, but now sort of looking at circumstance probably wouldn't be the best. So, first person that... I sort of like had in my mind, but I've, I've kind of changed seeing where she is on the roster, was Lacey Evans. I thought if Lacey Evans was still a face and kind of picked up a little bit of momentum, she could have won the Rumble. But seeing what they're doing with her and Ric Flair and with Blonde Cena, I'm sure eventually going to get involved in leading to a one-on-one match. I don't think Lacey's winning. Another superstar that I have been a long time advocate for, and but I don't think that she is visible right now in the spotlight to win the match, which would be fine because then it would propel her, is Nikki Cross. Uh, I feel like since after the breakup with Blish, she's kind of been in the sidelines. And I don't know if you guys have seen, but she has like these small little vlog videos going out about making 2021 her year and whatever. So I don't know if it's like a little teaser or whatever, but I don't think that they'll pull the trigger on her. So kind of narrowing everything down from what I'm seeing and from where I see things going, I think that it would make sense for Bailey to win. And I think that's who they're going to go for. Uh, because this time around you would have the aspect of WrestleMania match, Bailey being your heel Sasha being your face, and these two can have a great match. They proved it at TakeOver. They proved it at Hell in a Cell. But let me just emphasize by saying that if they do have this match, 
it would have to be the final match between these two in a while. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, two months later we have at Backlash Sasha versus Bailey again. I'm talking Sasha gets her moment because we all know she hasn't had her proper WrestleMania moment yet. Sasha retains in a grueling match. And then Bailey goes in her direction. Sasha goes in her own separate direction. Without these two crossing paths for, I would say, at least a year. But, so, that's what I think. I think that they're going to pull the trigger on Bailey Because we all know that the four horsewomen are eventually going to win a rumble. So, I think that right now things are aligned for Bailey to win. Considering she's not doing much, anything of relevance right now. So, this might propel her into a title picture for Mania. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the, the list of people and I, I'm considering who, if I were in charge of booking this match, who I would consider. And I know that there's been a lot of talk that, that WWE themselves are high on Bianca Belair, so I wouldn't be surprised or or necessarily against the idea of, of pushing, getting, like using this as the catapult to push her right. in the same vein one of my fantasy bookings of this match would be Liv Morgan, who we had the, the for lack of a better term, shitty return originally, but then we saw that she had uh, improved her game and she had a relatively interesting character, but she like she's fun to watch. And I think with her being on SmackDown, <clears throat> putting her and Sasha in a match for the title against each other, uh, is an interesting change of pace uh, versus maybe going with the Bailey Sasha that you you kind of threw out there, yeah, and and doing that one for the eight hundred time, yeah. And then of course my last one is the one that I mentioned when we were talking about um, whatever whatever match I segued to this from is Alexa Bliss <laughs> because if we're sticking with the whole. Uh, Paranormal Fiend esque Alexa having Alexa against Asuka since we already saw her manhandle her on Raw it might it might be interesting to see the match where it actually plays out between the previously unbeatable Asuka and the um, terrifying uh, sister Alexa um, based on I know I can only pick one but if I could pick two I would <clears throat> I, I am highly invested if we're going in the SmackDown route with uh, Bianca because like you guys have stated it would be the catalyst of a push yeah. that she has rightfully earned uh, you do get the whole diversity thing being played out which is a good thing especially in the women's revolution uh, for Wrestlemania to have two uh, African American wrestlers not only you know have the stage for WrestleMania, but who knows if the women will once again main event it? We're not sure since it is going to be two nights again. Is it going to be two nights? Yeah. yeah, this this one's two nights, and the next two are slated to only be one so far. Are they are they doing a live crowd for this one? I don't I don't believe so. If they are, it's going to be a limited capacity, though. Oh, okay. But that's the one direction I would like if Bianca could be... Like, Bianca, to me, is being sold as my number two pick, if we're being honest. But I'm kind of on the path where I would like it to be Alexa to win. It would be an interesting dynamic to have the once used to be unbeatable Asuka meet her demise against Alexa at Mania. Yeah. As I don't believe Alexa's had a moment at a WrestleMania. Mm, I don't think so. She really only had her, if you want to count it as a moment last year where she won, uh, did she win or did she retain the tag team championships with Nikki Cross? I think they retained yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. But if, but I would like to see this. The, like honestly, Alexa's work within the last, um, from the beginning of this whole thing with the fiend and her has started. She's developed 
her character. She's really done a lot with it, and you can't doubt the girl's in-ring performance. Yeah. So, so my pick would be Alexa. All right, so we got two Alexas and a and a Bailey. And it's not and it's not to say that I'm not in agreement with Sean on his pick, but I, I see the perspective of what, and I think you and I have discussed this off air. Yeah. The legacy of the women, uh, four horsemen of the WWE. And some people still are fans of the other one. <laughs> but yeah. who knows? Um, I'll just like quickly throw this in there. The reason why, like shockingly, I didn't pick, uh, Alexa is because Alexa is already doing things, so she doesn't really need the push. And theoretically, if Bailey wins and goes to SmackDown, then you can just set up a Raw title uh, match um, between Asuka and Alexa. So it's like kind of getting the best of both worlds. Yeah, I, I think my my only thing is that it's it almost seems gratuitous to. Because we've done one, Asuka, Becky, Charlotte, and then this one, right? Yes. It just yeah. seems almost gratuitous to me to keep giving the four horsewomen the wins. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I understand Dan, but like with me, it's like it's almost in- inevitable, you know? Like, oh, I'm not saying I'm not saying they won't do it. Yeah, I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. It's understandable. Uh, so, real quick, before you, you pitch the, the last one, I, I think we should uh, each throw out who we think our final four will be on this one, and then our winner. Fair. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of going off of, like, momentum and teasing. I would say Bianca, Bailey, Alexa... And probably, for obvious reasons, Blonde Cena. Because, <laughs> you know, if she can't win it, then we need to drive home the fact that she was almost there and she was in the final four, so. Uh, Alright. I'm going to jump in with my final four. I pick Alexa. Kind of like, since that's obviously my choice to win. Um, Bailey, let's have Liv be the underdog of the Final Four. And only because I see this person in it. Because I feel they're, they're eventually going to move to one of the main rosters. Rhea Ripley. Ooh. There's yeah. speculation that she's eventually going to move to the main roster. Well, she kind of was on there, and then somebody didn't deserve, didn't think that she deserved to have her momentum to be capitalized on. So, yeah. This is how I see um, Maria being in there, though. And I finally, like, oh, I'm going to make a choice of where I go. Yeah. The momentum of the Rumble, based on where, whenever she enters in, because I know she's going to be in but I see her in my final four. Fair. Yeah. Dan? Um, well, I mean, given that I couldn't pick somebody, and now I've got, I have three possibles, I'm going to choose all three of them. So Bianca, Alexa, and Liv, <laughs> with Alexa being the, the most likely winner of the, of the group, and then probably Charlotte. Who? Blonde Cena. There, there you go. You're a nerd. Who isn't? Anywho, on to the men. The men Royal Rumble match. This would be, I don't know what number, because I've been watching a lot of Royal Rumbles for the last few days. But we have the following participants. 21 out of 30 have announced. Interesting. From... Monday Night Raw, we have the returning Braun Strowman, Bobby Boy, Bobby Lashley. Wow. He's not with the duck. The duck is dead. I need to say it for emphasis. There we go. Uh, The phenomenal one, AJ Styles, The Miz, 
Jeff Hardy, John Morrison, uh, Seamus, Mustafa Ali, and of course, uh, Randy Orton. Those are your Raw contestants. Your SmackDown contestants being the following. Daniel Bryan, Otis, Jay Uso, Hashtag Push, Cesaro, thank you, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggy Ziggy Ziggler, Zigzag, Shinsuke Nakamura, Shinsuke, Mr. Livingston, Biggie Livingston, Langston. or I'm sorry, Biggie, Langston, uh, Langston, whatever. Let me, I don't know why I always say that. Uh, King King Corbin, Ray, and Dominic Mysterio. That fills out the SmackDown roster. And the one non, or I, I would call it a free agent. Also, your number two entrant, Edge. Sentai? And I did not mention this in the beginning, but your number one entrant being Randy Orton. Uh, right. Whoever wants to Take this one, go for it. Uh, I, uh, this is why I suggested we do the, the final four on the, the other one. But my thoughts on this one is I, I don't, I think anybody who's going to be in the running of winning is likely already announced for the match. Yeah. Um, I did throw something out there to Shant while you were missing. Uh, that suggested that perhaps we just might see a cameo by uh, his name is John Cena. The um, and, like, not as like a serious, or I would hope not as a serious competitor, but kind of like Edge last year. We just see him show up. Um, but are we, we getting? Are we getting Mister? You can't see me, or would we get the Doctor of Thugonomics? That's a great question, um, considering we haven't seen him uh, wrestle since he vanished in the uh, Firefly Funhouse match. I just hope that but, we can see him when he comes out. The what? I just hope that we can see him when he comes out. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, it's it's something to consider. I don't know if they will or if that was straight up a way to just erase him from existence. Because <laughs> I know we saw him in the, the teaser for WrestleMania. Yeah. But uh, either way, I, I would I would have him as like the sixth, sixth or seventh remaining person at most. I wouldn't have him anywhere near the final four. But my final four for this one, I'm going with uh, Biggie, uh, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, and then I'm gonna say it's a toss up between Randy or Edge. I think one of them will be in the final four. Um, but I can't justify either one because I think we still we still have to get the the payoff from Randy and the Fiend. So he's I don't think he's he's going to win, especially because that would make him a four time winner, wouldn't it? Uh, no, three time. That, that's only his third. Yep. This would only be his third. Yep. Uh, if he won, yeah, it'd be his third. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think they're going to do it when he still has beef. Going with Fiend. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll go with Edge. And then for my winner, I'm going to I'm gonna side with, I think it was you, Kamish, maybe, Daniel Bryan. That was me. Okay. Well, you then. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Sean, do you want to go next or do you want me to go? You can go. Okay. So... The way I see this going down, your number one and your number two entrant are going to start in the ring and continue what they left off in what is the greatest wrestling match of all time from last year. (laughs) However, it will carry out throughout the Thunderdome. We will not see these two return until we have four gentlemen of their own in the ring already. That's the one thing I predict happening with these two. They will try to kill each other. 
because they still have something to settle. And knowing Randy, he right now he's on this edge, uh, not literally edge, but on this war path of I'm not the legend killer, I'm the legend who kills. And I like the momentum Randy's getting. However, when you have four participants left in the ring, these two will come back, and we will get our number 30th entrant in the Royal Rumble, which will be The Fiend. And he will haunt his way back into Randy's life to continue what has been, I think, the best rivalry on Monday Night Raw that I've seen so far. Um, if I have to pick the final four, I bring it down to Daniel Bryan, Big E, Edge, and, uh, I don't want to pick him because I know they'll find a way to get rid of him, Braun. But I kind of would want to see Bobby be one of the last four. If I could say why I want Bobby to be in the final four, because maybe he can pull off the win and he can finally find a way to choose to go for a championship. And then all of a sudden it brings back a certain competitor that he's been wanting to face for a while now. And I mean by Brock Lesnar. Oh, that's who you were getting at. Yeah. But who knows? I I don't know what Brock's current WWE contract status is or if he's even signed to the WWE. Does anybody have any info on that? I don't know. Um, But if I'm going to pick a winner out of my final four, um, I discussed this with uh, Sean, off the air, I would say that Edge could win. And the only reason why I would say Edge wins is because this would add on to the resume that he already has to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He could challenge Roman and then eventually drop the belt to someone who should have deserved who should already deserve a championship status. Either Big E or Cesaro. So I'm going with Edge winning this. Wow. That's out there. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I'll chime in. I honestly think that we are in a situation where... There is a lot of candidates, and no matter who you choose, there's a lot of routes that you can go in, because it's a very unique situation right now. But um, I've, you know, Kamish, you and I, we've talked religiously about this over a few phone calls, and we've spitballed and had scenarios. So before I call out Final Four and who I think is ultimately going to win, I will just say that they have been teasing uh, a few people. Um, usually I have found over the last few rumbles that if you're not really doing anything of relevance, that they usually give you the rumble win. Um, you know, uh, they've been sort of kind of teasing Cesaro and the announcers are even kind of like jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, Cesaro picking up momentum. Could this lead to anything come the Royal Rumble? I also think that someone who's not doing anything is Daniel Bryan, who needs it because he hasn't had it. And he's also on his last uh, WWE run, essentially. So if I'm going to pick my uh, my final four, and I will just say this, like about Edge and everything, like, yeah, that's cool to have him in there. Um, I think that him and Randy are going to like, you know, be beating each other up throughout this whole thing. I think it might lead to a point where... Maybe, just maybe, um, you have one of those things where, like, Edge is trying to eliminate Randy, but he eliminates himself as well, or vice versa. Um, I think that maybe The Fiend will also make an appearance costing Randy, like, distracting him, and that costing him, you know, the Royal Rumble win. 
So it could go in either of those scenarios. But my final four, I would say, would be Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, uh, Braun Strowman, because I know he just came back and they do that whole thing where, oh, they close off SmackDown with Strowman, you know, standing tall. So those three and another one would probably be... I'll say either Edge or Randy Orton. You'll have one of those guys in there. Uh, like I said, maybe Randy gets eliminated because the Fiend like makes an appearance and distracts him. So maybe Edge winds up becoming uh, the, the fourth guy in there. But coming down to choosing a winner, I have been religiously saying Daniel Bryan because it seems like it's the time to pull the trigger and give him that you know road to WrestleMania. However, coming in very close is Cesaro, who I know, like, not only just, you know, the hashtag and all that, but again, they're kind of teasing it. So if I'm going to pick, I'm going to have two picks. I'm going to say either Daniel, which I think is probably going to be the most probable, if I'm being honest. But, you know, I can dream, and I'm going to say Cesaro. I want to throw this out there to both of you. Who do you not want to see win? I should have thrown that question out during the women's discussion, but no, you guys can answer that after this one, but who do you not want to see win the men's Royal Rumble? I guess I'll I'll, I'll take it first. Um, With all due respect, with all due respect, I wouldn't want to see Edge win. Just because coming from the point of he's already established, he's had his multiple WrestleMania moments, he's won a Rumble match, everybody knows who he is. I just don't think he needs it. Um, Wait, Edge has won a Royal Rumble? Yeah, 2010. Holy crap, I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, so, like, all due respect, and like, Edge is one of those guys where even if he doesn't win, he can somehow get booked into a WrestleMania feud. Like, he doesn't he doesn't need that Royal Rumble win to make him relevant. Which is why, in my mind, it's like, for the Daniel Bryans, for the Cesaros, for the Big E's, let's give them a Rumble match or a Rumble win because I feel like that'll dictate a relevant push within months to come. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll align with you in a way. I have a different answer, but... Um, I agree. The only reason I would want to see Edge win a, another Royal Rumble would be if Randy was the champion. Really? But because that's not the case, um, I'm going to go with Sheamus. I don't want to see Sheamus win because I know that they, they have toyed with this relationship between he and Drew. Yeah. But, but I, I, yeah. Wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to see that. Okay. I, my choice would be Braun Strowman. Interesting. Second would be Sheamus. And the reason why I picked Braun is because it, I would feel it has the Roman effect. Right place, right time, wrong guy. Okay. For Braun. Now, Sheamus, I, I'm in alignment with Dan in the regards that they've been teasing this whole... We're buddies, we're not buddies, we're mad at each other, we're friends. I, I don't think there's a need for it right now. I don't think that's a mania-worthy feud. I think it's for, like, a feud that could be squashed at, like, Backlash, backlash or, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. God, Backlash is a popular pay-per-view now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 that's good. <laughs> now to the women's side, who do you not want to see win? Not- I'll start this one, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> why? I, I already, I already said why. Um, I would say <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate. Um, because I'll, I'll, I'll mention her and then I'll give an alternate person since I already talked about it. I, I don't I like I said I think it's gratuitous to give it to Bailey just because she's one of your four main people. Um, I don't think that we need to have a checklist of okay, well Becky got it and Charlotte got it. Oh Bailey got it next year, Sasha. I don't 
No, I don't want that. Uh, but a secondary person who could win, but I don't really want to see win, God bless her, is probably Shayna. I like Shayna. Oh, really? I just, I just don't want her to win it. Not this Why? time. Why? I just don't. I, I don't think there's a place for her to win right now. I, especially because we already toyed with briefly uh, in I, I think right around Money in the Bank. We toyed with her and us and Oscar. I wouldn't want to see Sasha. Uh, I wouldn't want to see Sasha and Shayna. Um, but I don't want to. I, I feel like we already teased too much of the Shayna Oscar to go back to it so soon. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll take it next, and then we'll hear from Sean. Yeah. Um, I one. I would not want Nia to win. Of course not. <laughs> My reasons for that would be because one, it's the same Roman effect, wrong person, wrong time. You know. Two, because let's face it, like. I do not need to see her fucking destroy someone on a table 11 times. Oh, wait, I've already seen that. It's and annoying. You, it, and you can see it again for only nine ninety nine. Uh, yeah, you, but I choose not to. If you don't think somebody's going to hit the ground really hard on Sunday because of her, you're mistaken. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, that's true. Um... And then the other person I, I wouldn't want to see when it, I think you're right. Yeah, it'd be Shayna. I just think that she had her moment, and there's still a lot to work with. You know I mean? and, and and I don't I don't think that we need to forget about her or bury her. I think that it, that she just is the standard part. Yeah, she needs to step aside and just kind of exist, and then like you could push Bianca, and maybe Bianca and Sasha do their thing, Bianca wins, and then maybe we toy with Shayna and, and Bianca, which is fresh to your mainstream WWE audience. But, I also, like, I'm looking at this at this list, and I just feel like we we're, we're kind of stagnant right now. Like, I, I'm not inspired by most of the names on this list. That's because it's missing, like, two-thirds of the list. Well, that's true, but I mean, even even being thirteen people, like the fact that I'm very very staunch on three of them, and I ca- couldn't care less about the rest. Oh, I need to say this now, and it's going to piss Sean off really bad. Oh, I apologize. Please in advance. don't look. Please, please don't. Open I need that to. Up. I need to. I need to speak into existence. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, you hear that song hit, and she decides that this is her moment to come back. She cannot, cannot, absolutely not win. I want to go off of that for a second, actually, yeah, because I'll yeah. tell you what I would be okay seeing. Oh, God. Okay. If that if if that return happens, since we're apparently avoiding the name, um, I wouldn't be terribly upset if we have Shayna Jessamine and uh, the other one. Ooh. What's her name? Marina. Yeah, Marina. Those three all in the ring, and they're kind of doing stuff, and then that one shows up. And there's an animosity for her disappearing, and she gets launched by by these guys, or, well, she gets launched by Shayna, and we build to a Mania match on our two-day WrestleMania between that one and Shayna. Ooh. I wouldn't be be against that match. Okay. I, I, I I can only see it working that way. I don't know how Sean feels. No, I'm good. Just as long as she's not in title picture contention, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Okay. But so you're saying that, that her own team would did, like turn their back on her? Yes, I think that would be interesting. And I still think Shayna would be the face of the interaction. <laughs> huh. 
Even with that ugly face. Like, like Shayna would be her typical, um, like, mean, aggressive badass, but the fans would back her up instead of the other one. I, I just think that would be oh, more I'm hoping fun. that happens. And, and the other one would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, it's your turn. So Bring it out. I just, like, I want to clarify something. I just think that it's... And I'm just I'm speaking on behalf of myself, and I don't know if you guys share the same sentiment, but I sort of find it sad that during moments like this, I have to base my pick off of who can I ensure is going to get a push. Because back in the day when we would watch a Rumble, you wouldn't think about getting the push. You would just think about who's my favorite right now, and I hope that he or she wins. But yeah. now, because we're trying to differentiate, oh, well, so-and-so <laughs> could not get pushed but could still be relevant, it's like I base my pick off of that. So with that little chestnut out of the way, first and foremost, I didn't even remember it until, Kamish, you brought it up, I wouldn't <laughs> want her to win by any stretch of the imagination. I don't care if you have a solid five-star feud booked for the next two or three months, I don't want to see her win. I don't want to see her in the Rumble period. Um, I don't think you want to see her in the company. Yeah, that too. Like, I would rather have Gilbert <laughs> fill up a spot than have her be in it. So, um, with that said, yeah, I wouldn't want her to win. And again, because of what I just stated before, my mentality is I wouldn't want Lexi to win. And I know like that hur- it hurts saying that, but I'm just going off of she could not win and still be relevant, still be in a title picture. So I'm just trying to look, like like booking-wise, I'm trying to see who can get the push without winning the Rumble and who needs to get the push by winning a Rumble. So, yeah. So for those reasons, first and foremost, it's her that I wouldn't want to win. But going off of the names that we have right now, um, I do agree with you guys that, yeah, Shayna uh, doesn't seem like the appropriate moment. A year ago, yeah, definitely. But now it doesn't seem so right. Uh, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm an okay fan of Nia, but her winning right now, again, it doesn't really serve a purpose because we've seen her versus Asuka and, Sh- and Sasha so many times. So, but yeah, to narrow it down. had a, mo- a mania moment. Yeah, she did. She did, absolutely. Um, and it's like, yeah, to add that on there too, you've had your moment, so let's let's give it to somebody else. So, yeah, that's that's my perspective. And I'm just going to ask this last question, and then we can wrap up this episode, but would you be annoyed if, if she comes back? Yes. Um, why did I even ask? Yeah, Damn. why did you even ask? Uh, uh, I, I would say my initial reaction would definitely be in because we don't know what the game plan would be until we get there. Mm. Um, if if we play out like I like I pitched, then I won't be too torn up about it. Um, Only if it gets pitched in that direction, though. Yeah, like, it needs to be an, like, I get it, she's a prize fighter, no one cares, I don't need, I don't, I don't need you in the, the Raw women's title match, or the SmackDown women's title match, or much less the women's tag title match, I, but, if you have a story that's rooted in history, and, uh, backstory, and reality, then it might have enough of a compelling factor, especially with the the parts played by the other three, that it could actually be a genuinely good match. I also wouldn't want that to be like a uh, first night of WrestleMania main event. I, I I feel like those should be reserved for either like a Fiend Randy Orton payoff or what or one of the title matches. Yeah, people so, who actually appreciate wrestling. Oh my God. Thank you. Anyway, it depends on on the end game. If if she comes back and she wins, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be just livid. 
Um, but, just so that everybody it, is clear, we're talking about the overhyped rookie. So oh God, here I just we wanted go. to clarify because I feel like mur, he, mur, 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 as we used I, to call. Yeah, it, it's a lot to remember. Uh, once I remember it, I will eventually say the name again. I, I don't think you can say some of the words in there. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, we've kind of gone uh, in a different direction <laughs> since those days. Yeah, we're we're in the PG era. It's the Superdome, the Silver Dome era. God. All right, fellas. Well, let's let's bring it home. Yes. Uh, let's so bring it home. There you go, guys. We all gave our respective opinions about what we think is going to go down in the 2021 uh, Royal Rumble pay per view. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. On behalf of uh, Dan the Man, K- the Kamish, and myself, we hope that everybody out there is staying safe from everything that's going on. Again, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, and we will see you all next time. <laughs>